naval architect with 25 years of experience on offshore projects. Uh, he specialized in marine and offshore uh, consultancy. He is also involved in the technical committee, the CC114, um, leading the work group developing the guiding document uh, focusing on the, the standard uh, for OTEC. International Electrical Technical uh, Commission. Uh, it's an independent organization, uh, not for profit, and it's been going since 1906. The essence is to make sure that things like this don't happen, so we have standards set up, ways, approaches to, to, to minimize incidents, uh, and also the standards obviously help with things like USB. Uh, so we have uh, uh, a universal way of uh, applying things. And it's an international organization, <coughs> so the, the, there's committees in each uh, major, major country uh, together working on uh, approval of the standards. So just giving you an idea of what I'm going to cover. So uh, PT20 is part of TC114, which in, uh, covers other renewables. Uh, and I'll, I'll walk through the, uh, the general layout of, of the document uh, and explain one or two specific things. Uh, we're actually fairly close to finalizing uh, the document, uh, but there's still a little bit of time left for, for expert uh, input. Uh, the, the, the standardization approach is important from a, a project point of view gives you an idea of the, the sort of roadmap approach that's been used. This is obviously non OTEC specific, but it gives you a flavor of, of what you can do. Uh, and, and vital, I think, is in the world of standards not to, not to have excessive duplication. Uh, there are good standards that exist that cover a number of areas. So what we're aiming to do is to dwell on the ones that are specific to OTEC. Uh, PT20 specifically covers land-based systems as well as floating systems. These are just obviously historical slides, but it, you know, it, it just uh, shows uh, what has been uh, done in the past and, and the level of uh, uh, development that uh, uh, potentially can be done on land base. Here, here you see where, where we fit in. Uh, so this is the, uh, the web, an entry from, from the website, uh, and you can see it also covers Wave, tidal, and, and other energy converters, and OTEC obviously comes in as another energy converter. This this one actually uh, shows some of the the other systems. Uh, so, um, what I'd like to stress from this one, apart from the, the, the dates, uh, is that some of these other ones are already published, so they're there as in, in the published domain. Uh, and I would urge people to, to, to look at them and make use of them. There is uh, a real danger with these sort of standards is, is, is that they are not publicized enough. So if the industry doesn't know about them, they won't make use of them and they won't get the benefit of them. So there's always a danger that we write standards, we put a lot of effort into writing them, and then at the end of them, they sit in the, in, on the shelf. What's vitally important is the people involved in writing them also get out into the industry and explain what you can do with them. Why, why 
why it is a, a standard importance. Uh, typically, it, uh, particularly for OCHEC, it, it's reassurance for the investment community uh, and also in terms of, of technical due diligence. So when you are trying to get a, a project out into the market, uh, the investment banks will get uh, third party review of, of the proposal uh, and if they have an existing standard to work from and they can work through the standard and say yes you tick 95% of the boxes then that makes it much more straightforward to, to, to get an approval. So it, 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 it's a useful guidance document. Uh, what's actually in it? Uh, gen uh, general principles including land base, also shelf mounted, that, that, that's also an interesting option. Uh, and we're looking at the OTEC structure, process flow, the process system, and also the electrical system to the point of interconnection to the, uh, to, to the, to the grid. Uh, and then it's useful for OTEC developers, engineers, regulators, financial authorities. Uh, this, this is the, uh, the working group at, at the moment. Uh, so well, we've had uh, useful, useful input uh, from, from the group, but also note number 10, ad hoc specialists. So uh, I'm very keen to get extra input uh, to make the document better. I'm aware at the moment uh, the electrical side of it is perhaps a little bit weak. Uh, I believe uh, with, the, with the IEC being very much a, a, an electrical organization, when it goes back to them, they may wish to beef it up but we didn't. Uh, but we are keen to make sure that the uh, the uh, OTIC uh, specific aspects are are well covered. Uh, and what I want to stress from this slide is, is that the standards help to reduce risk. Uh, and the last thing you want with new technology is a setback early on. Uh, this. This rather rusty, uh, bedraggled one is the Ocean Links wave power device that uh, was lost uh, off Australia, moorings broke, uh, and uh, the whole system was not successful. Uh, I, I believe you can argue that this has been more use made of ex established oil and gas expertise. Incidents like that uh, could, could, could have been avoided. And the other one I'd stress here is that um, for, for the renewable devices, we do need to make use of established, uh, accepted criteria for things. So for things like mooring redundancy, there's a reason we have redundancy on uh, oil and gas units, and we need to consider that again for, for renewable devices. Uh, stability criteria for towage, etc. All of this, this is important. Uh, and also the people that you can bring in from the oil and gas sector can bring in in field service experience, uh, what you need from an OTIC device is year after year long term reliable performance. Uh, and we can actually, from the oil and gas side, there's knowledge of what can go wrong, how things can degrade in the field, and it's very important to get that, uh, that uh, input into the design process. <coughs> so, this here gives you the table of contents. Of, of the document. You can see we, we cover closed cycle, open cycle, hybrid cycle, uh, and again we cover floating land base. But we go on to things like operation and maintenance, transportation and installation, uh, and, and also references, and also decommissioning at the end of it. It's very important that for these devices that uh, we do have some understanding of how they can be decommissioned at the end of their life. A lot of uh, the cost that's associated with oil and gas operations for decommissioning is the fact that it wasn't thought much about in the, you know, the rush to get uh, oil out of the ground. Uh, this, this diagram shows the range of systems that we potentially consider, electrical piping, methodology criteria, fundamental to the design, uh, health and safety, uh, and crucially the environment. To we tick all the boxes from uh, environmental impact, etc. We also need to make sure that the document is flexible 
to cover numerous different uh, types of, of, of structure. And uh, in terms of floating here, we have a number of, uh, of, of different uh, potential approaches. I stress we don't want to reinvent the wheel. And there are a number of established documents which are cross-referenced in, in the document. So it, it, it's important uh, to make sure that you go and use the appropriate established reference for what is already pretty bread and butter engineering. Uh, an interesting point that we try and drive home in the document is, is how we actually define name, take, name plate power. Uh, and it, it's obviously fundamental. Uh, we have uh, net power, power, uh, power cyclic power, and we also have mm -hmm. utilized the, uh, the amount that we'll actually achieve uh, due to uh, variations in uh, uh, monthly surface temperatures. Uh, and, and so what we're proposing in the standard is the name plate capacity is defined as the maximum net power that can be, can be generated. And that's what we would hope to see is that that's a universal standard for the various projects that, uh, that, that are, are, are on the go. Uh, so basically you can compare apples with apples. Just, just stressing that there are certain areas for OTEP that are higher risk, uh, which includes typically the transportation and installation uh, phase. Uh, there is actually quite a long history of, of difficulties with installing uh, cold water pipes. Uh, the Indian project, I believe, did, did have uh, some failures. Uh, the OTEP one, the uh, Shepherdshet, I think uh, there was also some, some, some problems there. George Claude, obviously going back to the 30s, did, did, did lose, lose pipes, even though for the technology of the day he did, uh, did a great, great design. This isn't actually a, a cold water pipe, it's a, it's a sewage outflow pipe, but it's just interesting to see the amount of uh, uh, civil engineering equipment being used just to position that, uh, that pipe, so it just gives you a, a flavor of the, uh, the size of the operation. And again, bringing in experience from others, this is actually a, a slurry pipe from the uh, mining industry. Um, so again, the, we need to make sure civil engineering, all the uh, existing experience is, is properly made use of uh, when we're, we're going for uh, um, OTIC systems. This, this slide again is, is, is just reiterating the importance of pulling in oil and gas expertise. Um, it's been a huge industry, uh, there, is, there is innovative uh, thought processes. I mean, this, this one here is showing floating liquefied natural gas, and in this, the actual process of the FLNG system can be improved by using deposing water. In this case, for example, on the Prelude's FLNG for Shell, they do actually bring in uh, cooler water, but only from about 250 meters. But again, the, you know, it's potentially a, a, a stepping stone towards uh, uh, OTEC, uh, and, and there are basically a lot of uh, expertise that uh, as the gentleman from Alpha Laval said, make use of that, uh, of that existing experience. The, the renewable industry has a bit of a, a tendency to try and uh, you know, solve stuff totally as by itself, but actually going out to the wider community sometimes can, uh, can de-risk it uh, and make it uh, somewhat more straightforward. Uh, and that also goes uh, uh, again with the terms of, of, of testing things so, uh, uh, well, this is uh, SPM recently have been looking into, into OTEC, uh, and you can see the, uh, the, the test work that they've been carried in at. Uh, you know, this facility has a, a pit of uh, some 40 meters deep. Uh, so it's obviously important that people involved in OTEC research know that these types of facilities exist. Uh, and not only are the facilities, but it's the people who run them. You know, if you go and talk to Marin, you get a bunch of experts who bring with them the experience of complex model testing from a whole series of projects. So they can help make sure that what you get the maximum benefit out of the model testing that, that, that you need. Uh, this isn't 
PT20 related, but one thing I just wanted to stress here is the amount of oil and gas facilities, with the, obviously the price of oil is right down at the moment. There's a lot of drilling rigs, a lot of floating production units, uh, a lot of drill ships, some of which are, are going to scrap, but they're going to scrap with a lot of life left in them. Uh, for example, this rig at the moment is on the way to a, a, a Turkish uh, scrap yard. Uh, this is uh, an FPSO getting, uh, as you can see, broken up. This is drilling rigs in, in, in the Gordon in Scotland. A number of those, I suspect, will, will not work again. These are uh, uh, drill ships that are, are, are laid up at the moment and put down for between a couple of drill ships from uh, Tenerife. Uh, they're only about 10 years old that have recently gone to scrap. So really just like to encourage people to consider whether there are you know, low-cost options for hull forms that you might, might, might wish to consider, because you will not, again, probably ever get the opportunity to get hold of such high-quality equipment at such good prices. The other thing, uh, hopefully, PT20 will help with, and, and this is something that we discussed uh, at the dinner the other night, is, is the importance of making OTEC trendy in the, in the restaurant we just we said the word sexy, but the, the whole essence is, is for it to appeal to, to, to younger people. Uh, and, and that's where I'd like to compliment people like Darren and Paul in you know, Delft. There's a lot of young people who are coming through who are actually interested and energized by OTEC, but still, from a worldwide basis, it's pretty small. Uh, I was at Strathclyde University last week, and I asked a number of MSc and PhD students whether they knew about OTEC and they didn't know at all. And these are you know, ocean engineer type people, which is a little bit, uh, little bit frightening. And to be honest, you know, when you've got a plant like that, I mean, that, that you know, the farm trees, it should be able to, to sell itself. But <laughs> again, we need to, to get out there and, and tell people about it. Uh, uh, and if we don't, it's our fault that, that these systems are, are not moving forward. Um, so that, I, yeah, so that's really, really, Including where I am, um, the, I'm hopeful that the, the, the spec will help more projects get on. Uh, it'll, we're hoping to finalise really in, in November. Uh, but once it has actually been published, like all these things, you have a. It's when it's actually out within the industry, you will start to realise if there are inconsistencies, where the limitations are, uh, and thus I'm hoping that. Uh, with IEC, we'll have a, a working group that can take uh, feedback uh, and progressively uh, update the document. So, yeah, that's uh, essentially the upload. I guess we'll do some questions perhaps later on. Are okay? <laughs> Thank you, Martin, for the, for the presentation. Um, we'll keep it short on the questions now. Um, we'll, I think we'll take maybe one or two questions right now, if somebody has them. Um, thank you very much for, uh, we'll try to make up some of the time for now, and uh, thank you. Yeah, we see the, the, the importance of standards uh, coming through. I think that, that, that was very, very important to highlight into, into how we as an industry, uh, how these projects can get financed. And I think that the, that the point you made with some of the equipment that's out there lying around, uh, very important to note uh, that there's a good opportunity to get the, to get a multiple uh, system started. Um, see, we have the next uh, slide popping up. Um, 